Hufflepuff. If we got to choose our Hogwarts house, how many of us would pick Hufflepuff? Well, if I was sorted by the sorting hat in Pottermore, oh, I'm 100% really? Hufflepuff, yes. I'm so sorry. To quote Mindy Kaling, nobody wants to be Hufflepuff. And in the first Harry Potter book, Malfoy says, Imagine being in Hufflepuff. I think I'd leave, wouldn't you? In our Slytherin video, we talked about the story's anti-Slytherin bias, but at least that house has a certain coolness and prestige. The story pretty much dismisses Hufflepuff as essentially insignificant and boring. It's got the silliest sounding name and the least fat ass mascot. And people write off Hufflepuff as the place where you sort those leftover students who don't have something special about them. We play our game, Hufflepuff doesn't stand a chance. Stronger, quicker, and smarter. Yet if you look at the facts, this perception of Hufflepuff is completely off base. Hufflepuffs aren't the riffraff of Hogwarts, if anything, they're aspirational. This house represents decency and goodness that doesn't seek to be recognized. It embodies fairness, justice, and loyalty for their own sake, even when no one is looking. In short, what the world needs now is more Hufflepuffs. So maybe it's time that more of us started stepping up and claiming the Hufflepuff identity with pride. Before we go on, we want to share something important we've learned as a channel with digital content. Cybersecurity affects everyone. That's why this video sponsor, NordVPN, is important to us. No one's information is safe on the internet these days. You definitely need to be using a VPN or virtual private network to protect yourself online. That's why we use NordVPN. Right now, they're offering a great deal to our viewers. Use our link in the description below, nordvpn.com slash screenprism, and enter the code screenprism to get 66% off a two-year plan. That comes out to only about $3.99 a month. So think about how much your private information is worth to you. Do you know what I see in Hufflepuffs? I see loyalty. I see fierce friendship. So we are hardworking, we are compassionate, and at the end of the day, we're gonna do the right thing, and not because of the glory, not because of the glory, but for the greater good. The philosophy of Hufflepuff is this. Always do the right thing just because. In the first book, The Sorting Hat tells us, You might belong in Hufflepuff, where they are just and loyal, those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Just take a second to think about how long this list is. Hufflepuffs are one, fair, two, loyal, three, patient, four, honest, and five, hardworking. Put another way, is there anything wrong with Hufflepuffs? They're almost morally perfect, deeply virtuous people. You saved me, take it! If you had to use one word to sum up Hufflepuff's superpower, it would be integrity. And this is precisely what we hope for from the people who make up the world around us. Loyalty, friendship, work ethic, and honesty, that's everything we'd want in a friend or a colleague. Yet at the same time, most of us would prefer to think of ourselves as successful Slytherins, daring Gryffindors, or genius Ravenclaws. Rowling speaks of her love for Hufflepuff. In many, many ways. Hufflepuff is my favorite house. But of course, the author herself is partly responsible for the dismissiveness towards the house. Listen to this anecdote. My daughter, Jessica, said something very profound to me not very many days ago, actually. She said to me, and she, by the way, was not sorted into Hufflepuff house, but she said to me, I think we should all want to be Hufflepuffs. Did you notice how, even as she's praising Hufflepuffs, in the same breath, she feels the need to clarify that her daughter is definitely not one? So why is it that so few of us like to identify as Hufflepuffs when it's clear that Hufflepuffs make the world a better place? Part of the problem is that Hufflepuff strengths are devalued in our society. Patience, honesty, and loyalty are far less rewarded than smarts or bold moves. The biggest reason Hufflepuffs don't get appreciation, though, is probably that they're not out there bragging about their achievements. Rowling explained her respect for Hufflepuff by referring to their behavior during the Battle of Hogwarts. The Hufflepuffs, virtually to a person, stay, as do the Gryffindors. Now, the Gryffindors comprise a lot of foolhardy and show-offy people. You know, there's bravery and there's also showboating. The Hufflepuff stayed for a different reason. 
They weren't trying to show off. They weren't being reckless. That's the essence of Hufflepuff House. Hufflepuffs do good without expecting anyone to see it. And that's a rare and special person who embodies both courage and humility. How many of us can really sustain virtuous behavior without getting back any kind of validation or gratitude or even just a simple acknowledgement? Sorry to burst that bubble, Phoebes, but selfless good deeds don't exist. I'm gonna find a selfless good deed. I'm gonna beat you, you evil genius. Only a Hufflepuff can pull off a selfless good deed. Please take these Okami eggshells as collateral for your bakery. The main Hufflepuff we get to know in the story, Cedric Diggory, embodies the qualities of this house. Cedric Diggory was, as you all know, exceptionally hardworking, infinitely fair-minded, and most importantly, a fierce, fierce friend. Harry envies Cedric because this guy is essentially a better looking, more popular version of him. Just wondering if maybe you wanted to go to the ball with me. I'm sorry, but someone's already asked me. Cedric is hardly the person you want to be competing against, either in the Triwizard Tournament or in romance. The other boy. Mm -hmm. The handsome one. Right. Cedric. Meanwhile, mature Cedric seems to be above Harry's petty feelings of competition and jealousy. Look, I realize I never really thanked you properly for tipping me off about those dragons. Forget about it. I'm sure you would have done the same for me. Exactly. In a way, it's hard to imagine this perfect Hufflepuff being the hero of our story because it's hard to relate to someone who's so lacking in flaws. This strapping young lad must be Cedric, am I right? Sir. So while we tend to look down on Hufflepuffs in the abstract, in the story it's really the Hufflepuffs who have plenty of reason to look down on everyone else. Cedric is the one who earns his spot in the tournament, which means that objectively speaking, he's the best all-around student at Hogwarts. The Hogwarts champion, Cedric Diggory! Yeah! Meanwhile, Harry just gets in due to his special connection with Voldemort, and Cedric ends up being the casualty of that situation. So this plot is a perfect example of the way that a Hufflepuff excels and outperforms, only to get overshadowed and even martyred in a cruel, unfair world. And we'll celebrate a boy who was kind and honest and brave and true. Likewise, in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Hufflepuff Newt Scamander is too good for this world. You're too good, Newt. You never met a monster you couldn't love. Newt embodies an empathetic humanity. His selfless concern for animals represents an alternative to the human cruelty that's dominating his world. They're currently in alien terrain, surrounded by millions of the most vicious creatures on the planet. Humans. To further make the case for why the world needs Hufflepuffs, let's look at some pretty great ones outside of Harry Potter. This Is Us patriarch Jack Pearson would be a Hufflepuff. I will encourage you, trust and respect you. He's endlessly giving, loving, humble, and brave, never seeking glory, and always putting his family first over his pride. You are something else. I try. In real life, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff! What'd you say? Hufflepuff, I said. Oh, wow. They get it. It's okay. a thing with I'm us. Sorry. The world's highest paid actor this year exudes down to earth friendliness and kindness, essential Hufflepuff qualities that are no doubt a big part of why yes. he's such a universally liked box office draw. And despite his buff, macho appearance, he's also been open about his struggles with depression. I fell into a deep depression, and I remember at that time, um, the only thing I wanted to do was clean the walls. So this shows the Hufflepuff way of doing the right thing over curating a self-aggrandizing image. The deeply good Mr. Rogers would be another Hufflepuff. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Instead of trying to act macho or cool, he's given boys a model for masculinity that's about gentleness and decency. We could actually group Jack, Johnson, and Mr. Rogers together, because while each represents a very different image of masculinity, all three can be nurturing and vulnerable, and that's important in male role models. A lot of the best friend characters from literature, movies, and TV would certainly be Hufflepuffs, like Sam from Lord of the Rings. There's some good in this world, Mr. Farrell. 
and it's worth fighting for. He's loyal and hardworking, and there's no way Frodo would have ever got to his destination without Sam. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you! Samuel Tarly from Game of Thrones, too. I always wanted to be a wizard. Yes, he has a Ravenclaw-like bookish nature, but he clashes with the maesters because they value knowledge over doing the right thing. These maesters, I, they set me to the task of preserving that man's wind accounting and annulments and bowel movements for all eternity, while the secret to defeating the Night King's probably sitting on some dusty shelf somewhere completely ignored. And Sam puts helping his friends and saving humanity first. I made a promise to defend the wall and I have to keep it because that's what men do. More Hufflepuffs in Game of Thrones would be the incomparably faithful knight Brienne. Nothing's more hateful than failing to protect the one you love. The morally steadfast Sir Davos. You burnt a little girl alive. I only do what my lord commands. If he commands you to burn children, your lord is evil. And Jorah Mormont, who despite a dark past, is now defined by his loyalty to Daenerys and her cause. All I've ever wanted was to serve you. Ned Stark, some might call a Gryffindor because of his bravery, but he's a Hufflepuff because he does the just thing for its own sake without expecting any credit. I hope I'll serve you well. Just look at how he lets everyone falsely believe he has a bastard son in order to protect Jon Snow. Promise me, Ned. Looking at some beloved literary figures, Jane Eyre could certainly be a Hufflepuff. She's humble, modest, and doesn't think a lot of herself or chase glory. I must respect myself. Beth from Little Women would be Hufflepuff. She's almost unbelievably kind and virtuous. Perhaps we could send the Hummels our bread. And that's why it breaks everyone's heart when she gets sick. God wants me with him. There is none who will stop him. I never saw myself as anything much. Unfortunately, because Hufflepuffs are so morally pure, they make great martyrs and victims. And they get killed off by writers who want to manipulate our emotions. George Bailey from It's a Wonderful Life is someone who struggles with his Hufflepuff identity. He'd like a more exciting life. And I'm shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet and I'm gonna see the world. But in the end, his Hufflepuff integrity forces him to put his personal dreams aside. I got $2,000. Yeah. Here's $2,000. This will tide us over to the bank reopen. So that he can help all of the regular folks from his hometown who need him. To my big brother, George the richest man in town. Looking at some of our animated favorites, Dory and her mantra, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, 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 remind us of that Hufflepuff optimism and friendship. Come on, trust me on this. Trust you. Yes, trust, it's what friends do. Baloo from The Jungle Book is likewise a great friend and values the simple things of life. Look for the bear necessities, the simple bear necessities. And you could say that the Disney princess across the board embody Hufflepuff virtues, especially the originals. Their defining characteristic is kindness, followed by patience, honesty, loyalty, fairness, and optimism. Giselle from Enchanted, who's kind of a summary of the Disney princesses, shows how bringing this Hufflepuff good-heartedness into our cynical modern society... You are very lucky. I mean, just look at the way her eyes sparkle. It's no wonder you're in love. ...makes the world a far better place. But dreams do come true and maybe something wonderful will happen. Hufflepuff's colors are yellow and black. Yellow is associated with warmth and the sun. It makes us think of a positive outlook. Studies show that people connect yellow to words like cheer, happiness, and playfulness. There's also The Wizard of Oz's Yellow Brick Road, yellow brick road. which symbolizes that if we want to succeed, we just have to stick to a steady path with our friends by our side. Black makes us think of seeing things as black and white. This color doesn't have different shades, so it represents a fixed moral code. While Hufflepuffs have sunny, optimistic, yellow natures in daily life, the black represents their intense, fighting, serious spirit that comes out when it's needed. And Hufflepuff's the only Hogwarts house that doesn't have one metallic color, just as Hufflepuffs don't feel the need to shine and show off. The house is linked to the element Earth. Hufflepuffs are down to Earth and of the Earth. In astrology, earth signs are seen as hardworking and practical. And of course, earth is where plants grow. Today, we're going to repot mandrakes. And more broadly, there's something inherently nurturing and life-giving about Hufflepuffs. Rescue, nurture, and protect them. Hufflepuff's house animal is the badger. 
The mascot might seem like a tame choice compared to the other three houses' animals of prey, but in real life, badgers are actually fierce carnivores. People just don't tend to know that badgers are so fearsome. Likewise, Hufflepuffs are often underestimated and perceived as milder than they are. Just look at cool, edgy Hufflepuff tonks. Don't call me Nymphadora. The badger brings to mind the expression to badger someone, which makes us think of persistence. Badgers dig in the earth, Hufflepuff's element. And this symbolizes that Hufflepuffs aren't superficial. They understand it's the deeper things that matter. Think of how Newt, unlike everyone else around him, can see beyond the freaky, frightening appearances of magical creatures. In pop culture, we meet a number of badger characters with good hearts, who make the most loyal of friends. These badger characters might like to be homebodies, and Hufflepuffs like a cozy home space too. Although he almost never went in search of society, he was always at home to his friends. Real badgers border on antisocial. A Hufflepuff like Newt has trouble connecting to other people. I'm writing a book about magical creatures. Like an extermination guide? No, a guide to help people understand why we should be protecting these creatures instead of killing them. Goldstein? But once he does, he's the most faithful friend you could ask for. Are you going somewhere? No, we're going somewhere. On Pottermore, Rowling describes the Hufflepuff common room as, quote, a cozy, round, low-ceilinged room reminiscent of a badger set. In the books, Hufflepuff's common room is near the Hogwarts kitchens. We know that the house's namesake, Helga Hufflepuff, was associated with food charms and created many classic Hogwarts recipes. So this house clearly enjoys eating and, by extension, creating a comfortable home life, enjoying life's fundamental pleasures. Rowling has written, quote, The complexity or otherwise of the entrance to the common rooms might be said to give a very rough idea of the intellectual reputation of each house. Hufflepuff has the simplest common room entrance routine of the houses. It just requires someone to tap out the rhythm of Helga Hufflepuff. So we might take from this that the rest of Hogwarts at least perceives Hufflepuff as the lowest on the intelligence ladder. But Rowling makes a point of noting that we shouldn't conclude from this that, quote, Hufflepuffs are dimwits or duffers. While they may not all be cerebral, the Hufflepuffs we meet seem to be perfectly smart, very good students. The simplicity of their entrance routine reinforces instead that they value a stable home life without unnecessary complications. Hufflepuff's ghost is the fat friar. As a religious figure, the friar reflects the house's humility and moral goodness. He was executed after people in the church started distrusting him because he was able to cure the pox. So this fits that Hufflepuff pattern of not getting rewarded and even being punished for their good deeds. Helga Hufflepuff, one of the four founders of Hogwarts, embodied fair-mindedness. In the Order of the Phoenix book, The Sorting Hat tells us, Said still the ring, we'll teach just those whose ancestry is purest. Said Ravenclaw, we'll teach those whose intelligence is surest. Said Gryffindor, we'll teach all those with brave deeds to their name. Said Hufflepuff, I'll teach the lot and treat them just the same. So, fundamental to the Hufflepuff philosophy is the democratic belief that all people should be treated equally. We see Helga's legacy continue in the sequel to Fantastic Beasts. Newt teams up with Dumbledore to try to defeat the fascist Grindelwald, who believes wizards are entitled to rule over muggles. So to sum up, it's about time we started giving this house the respect it deserves. We should think of Hufflepuff the way we think of Cedric, as somebody better than most of us, as a moral role model we can aspire to be like. Cedric, Cedric did know this stuff. He was really good. The world needs Hufflepuffs, so let's all try to be a little more Hufflepuff ourselves. I can only say to you that I would not be at all disappointed to be sorted into Hufflepuff House. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by a really important service that everyone needs to be using, NordVPN. You wouldn't leave your door unlocked when you go on vacation, so why leave your internet connection with all of your personal information totally free and open to intruders? All of our content at Screen Prism is digital, so we've learned about cybersecurity. We don't want to take any chances when it comes to having our information stolen, and neither should you. 
These days, with the repeal of net neutrality and the amount of time we all spend on unprotected networks, like in cafes or airports, it's ridiculously easy for third parties to use your data, either for advertising or for far more malicious goals. So if you want to stay safe, you should use a VPN, a virtual private network. Basically, what a VPN does is make it like you're always on a private network, even when you're sending data across a public one. It sends your internet traffic through remote servers around the globe and hides your IP address, so you're always protected. NordVPN is by far the best option out there. They're the only VPN that got a perfect score from PC Mag, and they provide military-grade encryption, so neither advertisers nor hackers can get a hold of your personal data. Plus, they offer 24-7 customer support. If you watch our videos, chances are you spend as much time online as we do. So start protecting your internet experience today. Click the link in our description below, nordvpn.com slash screenprism, and use the code screenprism to get 66% off a two-year plan. That's only about $3.99 a month, and what could be more worth it? So go to nordvpn.com slash screenprism and check it out right now.